I love collecting writing advice from famous authors and writers. This type of writing advice offers a glimpse into their creative processes. And if you read enough of this advice, you can even find some instructive tips that you can use for your own articles, stories, and even books. Hi there, my name is Brian Collins. Welcome to the Become a Writer Today channel. In this video, I'm going to go through 14 different pieces of advice that made a big impact on me as a writer and which can also help you with your writing career. Hope you enjoy the content in this video all about writing advice that you can apply. If you do, let me know in the comment section below. And if you want to get more videos like this, then please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Number one, read widely and deeply. A good writer's job is to read regularly and outside of their comfort zone. They should take apart books that they love and don't love so they can figure out what works about this book and what doesn't work. Because reading widely and deeply will help you understand the conventions of your preferred genre. Stephen King is one of my favorite authors of all time and I have a tattered copy of his book on writing on my bookshelf. There's a fantastic piece of advice inside of this book. If you don't have the time to read, you don't have the time or the tools to write. Simple as that. He's not alone. Nobel Prize winning author William Faulkner also hammered home the importance of reading a variety of genres and books. He offered this piece of advice. Read, read, read. Read everything, trash, classics, good and bad, and see how they do it, just like a carpenter works as an apprentice and studies the master. Read, you'll absorb it, then write. If it's good, you'll find out. If it's not, throw it out the window. Number two, creativity is infinite. New writers often like saving a really good idea for their next blog post, their next article, or their next book. They say things like, I worry what'll happen if I run out of ideas and I don't feel inspired, so I need to hold on to this one. But here's the thing, creativity isn't a finite resource because usually one promising idea will lead to the next one. Plus, your biggest challenge as a writer isn't actually finding good ideas. It's putting them to use and getting the reader's attention in the first place. Maya Angelou, the noted poet and author of the classic I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings, said about the creative process, you can't use up creativity. The more you use, the more you have. Number three, keep a daily journal. Daily journaling is the easiest way to build a good writing habit because anyone can write about their thoughts, feelings, and ideas without worry. Usually these entries are for you alone as the writer. A few years ago, I took an excellent writing course by David Sedaris on Masterclass, a profile masterclass elsewhere on the Become a Writer Today channel. Anyway, in this course, he explains how his journaling practice helps him write. I was fascinated to see how he writes up his journal entries like short stories. They include character descriptions, locations, dialogue, colorful anecdotes, metaphors, or even an inciting incident. These scenes from his own life, which he turns into mini stories, later become material for his colorful essays for which he's famous. Sidaris says about writing these daily vignettes in his journal, I know for myself it's very important to write every day. So much happens by sitting at your desk when you don't have an idea. You need to sit there and not have the internet and see what happens. Number four, art is a support system for life. Writers, particularly new writers, can struggle to find a work-life balance. I know because this happened to me. That's because we spend so much time working alone in rooms like this one. To be honest, working with the written word is an introverted profession. And finding a balance between spending time alone and cultivating friendships, relationships, and spending time with people can take a little bit of time to get right. Something that I struggled with, but then I came across this excellent piece of writing advice from Stephen King in On Writing Yet Again. He said that life isn't a support system for art. It's the other way around. In other words, the experiences that you have in your personal life, at work, or in the wider world are source material for your books and for your writing. It's not that you should shun these experiences because you want to write. Instead, draw from them for your written works, your stories, and your articles. Number five, write a little every day. Jerry Seinfeld is one of my favorite comedians. Did you know when he was an unknown but ambitious comedian, he gave himself a single task. He said to himself, Jerry, I have to write one joke every day. 
and he hung a huge wall calendar next to where he wrote these jokes. And if he wrote a joke on a given day, he'd get a felt tip pen and mark an X through today's date. He built up a chain of X's on this wall calendar. And Jerry Seinfeld said that his only job was don't break the chain. Now, Jerry later on went on to recount some of these anecdotes and stories in his bestseller, Is This Anything? And his advice shows that writing a little daily is much better if you want to build up a body of work than trying to write for hours at the weekend. And also writing a little bit every day will help you cultivate an important writing habit that will help you finish bigger projects like a book. Number six, separate writing and editing. New writers, and I count myself in this bucket, often confuse writing and editing when they're starting out. But the thing is, these are two different tasks that engage two different parts of the brain. If you sit down and try to write a first draft and also try to edit your sentences at the same time, you're just gonna confuse yourself. It's a surefire way to never finish anything. I came across a fantastic piece of writing advice from the celebrated American essayist, Joan Didion. Did you know that when she finished a draft of an article or one of her famous essays or even a book, she'd print it out and stick it in the bottom drawer of her freezer. She'd leave it there for weeks, if not months, until she completely forgot about it. And then she'd fish it out and read through it and mark it up ruthlessly. Joan Didion was of course in a world of her own as a talented writer, but she also didn't let obsession about perfectionism get in the way of finishing her work. She said, there's a point where you go with what you've got or you don't go. That brings me to tip number seven. Don't fear to rewrite. Joan Didion's approach to first drafts isn't unique. Tamika Watiti is the writer behind hit films like Jojo Rabbit and Thor Ragnarok. He often takes the editing process one step further. He'll rewrite a script or a draft from scratch months after finishing it. And he famously said about writing and editing, I will write a draft and put it away for a year or two. Sometimes it'll be two years, sometimes three. Then I'll come back to it and I'll read through it two or three times. Then I'll throw it all away and start over from page one, based on the memory of what I've read. Well, that sounds like a lot of work, doesn't it? Well, that brings me to tip number eight. Writing is work. Look, a doctor doesn't complain of not feeling it before surgery. And a plumber doesn't complain to a client that they're out of inspiration for fixing a job. So why is writing any different? Sometimes a writer has to turn up in front of the blank page and hit that word count or publishing milestone, even if they're not feeling it, or even if they're tired or out of ideas. And often the only way to become a better writer is by doing the work. Came across this piece of fantastic advice from Oliver Stone, who said about creative graft, writing is but on chair. That brings me to tip number nine, write just one page a day. If you wanna write a book, it's not easy, despite what some people say. The prospects of writing thousands of words about a single idea or a story is off-putting for many new writers and understandably so. That's because it can take months of commitment to turn an idea into a first draft and then edit it, revise it and publish the results, knowing that it may not sell or you may need to write another one before you find success. So instead, it's far better to take a book and break it down into smaller chunks that you can tick off one by one. So rather than saying you want to write 60 or 70,000 words, why not just set a daily word count that builds up towards this writing milestone? A daily word count that would fill a single page is approximately three to 400 words. And if you write three to 400 words a day, every day you'll quickly have that first draft. You can make measurable progress on your book. I came across a fantastic piece of advice from author John Steinbeck in a 1943 interview with the Paris Review. And he said, Abandon the idea that you're ever going to finish. Lose track of the 400 pages and write just one page each day. It helps. Then when it gets finished, you're always surprised. Tip number 10, stop when the going is good. Look, turning up in front of the blank page and not knowing what you're going to write next is intimidating. It's no wonder many people complain of writer's block. But instead, successful authors and writers set up the following day's work in advance so this problem doesn't happen. They actually stop in the middle of a sentence or paragraph and leave subtle triggers for their subconscious to work on a story in the meantime. This ensures that they don't run out of inspiration or ideas, and it makes it easier to sit with those difficult first drafts. This tip goes all the way back to Ernest Hemingway, who famously said, the most important thing I've learned about writing is never write too much at a time. Never pump yourself dry. Leave a little for the next day. 
The main thing is to know when to stop. Tip number 11, avoid cliques, gangs, and groups. I spent a couple of years in a creative writing group. It was fantastic. These groups are a great mechanism for new writers because they encourage accountability. You can get feedback on your work and you can also connect with other writers and talk about books and your drafts. It's a great place if you really need that type of connection earlier on in your writing career. But there's also a problem with writing groups. Relying too much on feedback can hinder your progress as a writer. Because if you're a, young, a younger writer or a newer writer, chances are you're gonna start tailoring your drafts and manuscripts to impress your friends and people in the class. And this will dramatically impact on the quality of your writing. You might even find yourself mimicking the style of other writers in the class that everybody likes. At some point, you need to break out from this writing group and go out on your own. This piece of writing advice is supported by Zadie Smith, the author of White Teeth. She told The Guardian, the presence of a crowd won't make your writing any better than it is. Tip number 12, seek clarity and precision. Several years ago, I worked as a content writer for a software company. I spent a lot of time editing work written by executives and other colleagues who didn't really write for a living but needed help self-editing. I was happy to do this and I loved helping people condense their ideas and express themselves in a way that made an impact in the company. But the biggest mistake that I saw was people who didn't really write tended to rely heavily on complex words and terminology. They felt like that this would impress readers when all it did was hinder the readability of a good piece of writing. Now you may not be a content writer or editing writing by other people, but the same holds true for fiction or for writing online. Clarity and precision are far more important than impressing readers with your knowledge of the English dictionary or a thesaurus. Consider George Orwell who wrote 1984. He said, never use a long word when a short one will do. Tip number 13, every story element has a purpose. Have you ever heard of Chekhov's gun? It's a famous piece of metaphorical writing advice that holds true for fiction writers, but non-fiction writers can use it too. Basically, if a writer mentions a detail or a character in a story, it should have some consequences for the character or the plot. So according to Chekhov, if a gun appears in Act 1, it must go off in Act 3. You'll see this today in lots of popular films. When James Bond gets a gadget in Act 1, he has to use that watch or that fancy car by Act 2 or Act 3 of the film. Similarly, when a Marvel superhero discovers their new powers in Act 1, they have to use them against the villain in Act 3 or audiences will be unsatisfied. Chekhov summarized this principle in a letter to his friend that he sent in 1889. He said, one must never place a loaded rifle on stage if it isn't going to go off. It's wrong to make promises you don't mean to keep. That brings me to my final tip, work through rejection. All writers face rejection at some point in their careers. Perhaps you pitch a publication and the editor says no, or it's crickets. Perhaps you look for a book agent and you can't find any, or perhaps you write a book and nobody buys it. All of those things have happened to me. That said, rejection is part of the creative process. Usually you can use these moments to figure out what aspects of your craft or career you need to work on. Perhaps you need to try a different topic or a different genre or a different niche. I didn't have much luck writing fiction, but it was only when I started writing nonfiction that I was able to earn a good living online. Now I came across a fantastic piece of writing advice if you're struggling with rejection. It comes from Neil Gaiman in his masterclass. He said, people ask me, Neil, how do you cope with rejection? And there are only two ways to do it according to Neil. One is you go down, you get sad, you put the thing away and stop writing. You go and get a real job and do something else. And the other thing is a kind of crazed attitude that actually the most important thing now is to write something so brilliant, so powerful, so good that nobody can reject it. In other words, expect a little rejection, but use it as fuel to write something new, to write something better. Hope you enjoyed the content in this video, all about 14 pieces of actionable writing advice that I came across. These tips all made an impact on how I approach writing and whatever your genre or niche, I believe they can help you too. If they do, hit thumbs up. And if you wanna get more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe.